Hey, bless up everybody. How you doing? This is King Kevin Dorable, the mentor, author, inspirational speaker. I'm here to talk to you today why we can't afford not to read anymore. Now, I posted something on my Instagram, which is at Courage to Believe, that's number two, about black people not reading. As a matter of fact, this post caused such an uproar. I mean, people left all kinds of comments that were positive, some were negative. You know, most black people were very uh, angry, you know, from the energy projected in their comments regarding why did I post such a message that black people don't vote. And the reason why I posted that because I know most of us don't read. You know, many of us don't. As a matter of fact, a sister just told me the other day, um, she don't read much. On only thing she reads is what's in the post, the image itself. She doesn't read the captions. She says it goes by what's on the actual image. And she doesn't read in her personal life. And I'm like, well, maybe I can help you change that. You know, of course, I've written two books. Um, they're actually right behind me. Uh, Seven Types of Queens, Keen Desire, and Courage to Believe. Both are nonfiction. And the first book, The Courage to Believe, is an inspirational autobiography about how God helped me overcome adversity in life. Now, why am I talking about the books that I wrote? And why am I sitting in front of my bookcase? Well, actually, this is just one of my bookcases. I actually have several bookcases. There's a bookcase in every single room. And... I do that because growing up, I always believed that if I can read, if I can continue reading, I could read my way out of poverty. I always felt as if I felt power around books. You know, I felt inspired. You know, I could aspire to be anybody that I want to be, wherever I want to be in life. And that's one of the problems with our youth today, is that they don't see the future. They only see the immediate presence. They don't see the value in reading outside of what's on their phone screen or tablets. And that could be a big problem because many of us, especially if you're in the ghetto, you don't see a foreseeable future. You only see the presence. You only see the struggle of the presence. You only see the harassment of the police today. You only see the uh, degradation that's going on within maybe your own homes. That's all you see. You don't see a way out. You know, you live in check to check. Some of these teenagers, if they have a job at all, because I must admit, it's much harder to have a job today as in 2017 as a teenager than it was back in, you know, 95, 96 when I started work. As a matter of fact, I got my first job in 94. Now, when I was in the fifth grade, my teacher, Ms. White, she made a comment. The very same post that I posted um, on my social media, and throughout my Facebook pages, those who follow me, King Kevin Dorval, my teacher in the fifth grade said the same thing. At the time when I was in fifth grade, I wasn't a big reader at all. I wasn't, as a matter of fact, I didn't read. And the fact that I didn't read, she's seen as a weakness already because I already had a speech impediment problem. You know, I already had an issue reading. And she's seen that, and she went and encouraged not just me, but all the students the power behind reading. So I began reading books on Malcolm X, Martha King, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass. You know, she she imposed those books upon us, which is a good thing. We need to learn more, you know, about our culture and heritage. But as in 2017, we can't just keep praising the same historical leaders that they feed us in elementary. There's so many more in Africa, so many more in Haiti and Jamaica. So many more in the United Kingdom, Bahamas. Um, there are so many, throughout the U.S., there are so many great African leaders. There's so many uh, black queens and kings who have paved the way. I highly recommend reading books on Queen Nzinga, um, books on Dr. Amos Wilson. As a matter of fact, I should have brought that book with me. Dr. Amos Wilson was another great author and pan-Africanist. He always preach that we should read about our ancestors so that we can understand the past therefore we can control the present and then the future. I'm going to get back into that in just one moment, okay? I really want to touch on that point. His book that I want to recommend is called Black on Black Violence, Black Self Annihilation in Service of White Domination As a matter of fact I was going to show you guys a few books but while I'm on that subject, just keep in the flow of things, let me read to you some very interesting facts 
And I guarantee you, and it's been proven that this correlates with the lack of reading. Reading allows you to write your own future. So instead of our children, our students, writing their future, the prison system is writing their future. The juvenile centers are writing their future. You follow what I'm saying? That is dictating where they're going to go. And you know how hard it is to, get, to stay out of the system once you've been in the system? Look, you're looking at a living testimony of overcoming the system, the criminal justice system. Once the uh, slave trade, once the plantation slavery was over, the new slavery was and is incarcerating black males and black women to do the cheap labor. As a matter of fact, there's a powerful book I have up here uh, by the sister named Michelle Alexander. Many of you guys read it, The New Jim Crow. Um, the Jim Crow laws are still in effect. So this is definitely one of the recommended books that I want you guys to read. Um, make sure you can see it real good. The New Jim Crow. The sister wrote a very powerful book. As a matter of fact, it's taking her all around um, the world. And it's New York Times bestseller. I hope my books become a New York Times bestseller as well. So shout out to the sister. Now, why is black males um, in high school and college dropout rates increasing? Dropping out of schools and jumping straight into prison. In 2009 and 10, 96,000 students were arrested and 242,000 referred to law enforcement by schools. Of those students, black and Hispanic students made up more than 70% of their arrests or referred to law enforcement, meaning they already had an encounter with the criminal justice system. Already, those seeds were planted. You know, the system already claimed them, yeah, you're going to prison as well. This is your foreseeable future. Over 205,000 women incarcerated in jails and prisons. The lifetime likelihood of imprisonment was one out of every 19 black women, one out of every 45 Hispanic women, and one out of every 118 white women. One in every 15 African American men will go to prison. One out of every 15 now. One in every 36 Hispanic men. One in every 106 white men. So you have one out of every 15 African American men will be in prison in comparison to one out of every 106 according to the Bureau of Statistics. That is very fascinating, very interesting, very interesting. Black males represented the largest prison population um, of 35.4%. White males 32.9%, Hispanic males 17.9%. So white males wasn't too far behind, but if you look at the, the population wise, you know, black people being roughly 12, 13% of the US population, and white people represent a lot more than that. I believe the, the white population, what is it, 20, 30%, but we still outdo them in prison. We, we, we still outpopulate them. And that is something to brag about and actually that is something very horrific because the more of our black men in prison, that means the less leaders we have, the less protectors, the less providers we have in the homes and the communities. It's very interesting stuff. Now, you, you can get offended by the statement black people don't read, but I'm an author and I've sold books. I guarantee you, you put an event together you will have a thousand people at a club in comparison to maybe a hundred people at a literary event, at a book signing or book talk. See, the power behind reading is that the words itself, it empowers you, it infuses you to open up that creative space in your mind. There are, there are over 200 billion brain cells, 200, over 200 billion brain cells that we have that can measure things. Um, that can have the, the possibility of recording our thoughts, that has the, the, the cells around us, the atoms around us, controls them. It, it, it creates these vibrations around us. It creates the energy. Our brains create the energy, you know, our heart. It creates this love energy or it can create hate energy around us. It literally, our, brains, our brain cells literally create what's around us. It creates our immediate environment. So if all you see is guns and drugs and prostitutions, calling women bitches, calling dudes niggas, if that's all your mind is on, that's all your mind will manifest. 
and by reading and not just reading any book but reading books to empower yourself edify yourself so you can edify others is very powerful some of the books uh, a young lady asked me to do a video on what books I recommend now right now we have a reading program called through our lens which is going to take place in November once I get back from London from my book tour um, around November 15th we're going to have a a one-year reading program. It's going to be reading and film. So the program is really called Through Our Lens Books and Films where we teach the students which are from the ages of 8 years old to 18 years old how to read, how to write, and how to publish their own books. Why is that? Why is it we have the publishing your own books component? We're doing that because we want the students to be able to write their own futures. We want them to be able to dictate their future, not the state prison system, not the criminal justice system, not the uh, police officers, not the correction guards, none of that. I've been in the system, I know. As a matter of fact, not only do they write the future, they write the future on their uniforms, those inmate numbers. I know people who've locked up, who've been done some time, they memorize those numbers as if they was their social security and their birth dates. That's how much power and control the criminal justice system has within the black community. If we want to change our political, social, economic situation, we must do it in books. We must do it by reading books that empower our community. Now I'm going to send you a couple of books here for children. There's two books I want to recommend. One by a sister named Toshiba Berry McLaren. She has a book called Space Station Elementary. She wrote this book in elementary. She's a grown woman now. Grown woman. But she wrote this book when she was in elementary and she recently published it a couple years ago. I believe, what's, what's the exact year? Because I just bought it 2015, so I was right, a couple years ago, in 2015. So, shout out to the sister. You get more information, um, you know, on her website. But, but go to uh, Toshiba Barry McLaren. She's also on Instagram. Go to my Instagram, tag me, and I'll make sure that you get her message. My Instagram is at Courage to Believe or at 7 Queen 7 Kings which is um, number seven. The Lion King. Children love this book. They love the movie. Have them read the book. Have them read the book and see themselves as the characters in it. They might want to see themselves as Simba, you got Uncle Scar, you got the little um, uh, Zazu, you know, you got a few characters in here. Have them read books that they've seen the movie about. That's how you get their taste into reading. The reason why we also have the, the uh, Through Our Lens program, which you get more information on my website, kevindorval.com, or go to thecouragetobelieve.com, um, and you get more information. But we wanted to teach the students how to make money. We want them to learn how to make money so that they can see the, the, the works behind writing a book, what it takes to write a book, and so they won't be discouraged when it comes to tasks such as writing, a book or a major project. A lot of people see writing books and seeing hundreds of pages like they can't do it. Look, it only takes one book at a time. Look at me. I've written two books. Actually, I've written three books, two published, and I'm working on my fourth book right now, which is a children's book called King Kevin's Courage. So the title may change because I don't want little girls to be um, discouraged from reading it because I, I may want to do something that's that's unisex. It is unisex, but I don't want the title to, to scare people away. One of the things you want to be careful with when you're writing books and promoting them is the title. The title could turn people on or turn people off. Luckily, I'm very creative. I've written two great books with two great titles. Um, Seven Types of Queens, King Desire, which is this book here. As you can see. Hope you guys can see it there in the camera. Very powerful book. I have it um, on, on the screen. And also... The Courage to Believe, which is an inspirational autobiography about how God helped me overcome adversity in life. Very powerful book. I wrote this back in 2012. It was published on my mom's birthday, 12, 12, 12. I <laughs> kept those numbers. And Seven uh, Types of Queens, King Desire, which came out July 17th. This is this hardcover book is $28. The ebook is $9.99. Paperback is $16. Definitely support. Now, I have a classic book by Ernest Hemingway. This guy isn't um, African American, but I highly encourage people not to read only books written by black people. You know what I'm saying? Stop doing that. Because by reading on books by only black people, you limit yourself. Because black people, we don't cover all the fields. We, we may. 
cover many of the fields, but white people write great books too. You, you feel me? Even though majority of my books is actually mixed. I have authors from all over the world, books from all over the world. Some books not even in English. You know, because I, I speak a little uh, Spanish, a little French, you know, being Haitian. Now, this is an Ernest Hemingway classic book called the, the Old Man and the Sea. If I'm not mistaken, this might be the book that Denzel Washington was, was reading in that one movie that he was in. All right, Herbert Hemingway, classic book. He's a classic author. That's why when I seen this book, it was a no-brainer. I was going to get it. Now, bedtime um, Bible stories. The Bible is one of the great, greatest books written. <laughs> it's definitely one of the most sold books. Um, even if you don't believe wholeheartedly in the Bible, the Bible contains so many great and, and awesome information that I think all of us should read and look into. I, I truly, truly do. I, I love reading what the Bible offers and I love what it does as far as encouraging me to have faith. You gotta have faith. You, you gotta have faith, even courage to believe in yourself. And the book, the Bible has a lot of great stories, um, great for children. And what I, what I would recommend and, what's, and what, what I would say is, my favorite story is two stories. One, one of Moses and one of Joshua. Joshua being able to stop the sun, you know, in the middle of a war. You know, that's power. Just being able to visualize that. And that's what reading does. It helps you visualize things you can normally can't see. And by the way, my, um, my program, Through Our Lens, I want to tell you guys that um, the fundraiser is taking place right now. Go to the courage to believe .com or go to GoFundMe. Donate five dollars or donate five thousand dollars. We're raising ten thousand. Donate what you can. Share at least share this video. Share the GoFundMe link, which will be at the caption of this video. Okay, um, it's very important. We want to take this um, from South Florida to um, North Florida to Atlanta to New York to Haiti. Because my nonprofit, the uh, Courage to Believe International, we are based in Florida, but we want to, we're trying to set up work in Haiti. I've been working on that for a while. Um, and when I get the sponsorship needed, trust me, it will happen. Now, one of my favorite books of all is this book. I wanted to grab the um, Dr. Amos Wilson book, which is in another room, but I'm not going to go get that book. But this book here, which he also recommends you read, is The Destruction of African Civilization, or Black Civilization, by... Uh, Chancellor Williams, one of the greatest books written, Dr. Borishango, um, another author and Pan-Africanist. I want you guys to make sure you see the title of this book. This book here breaks down why and how Africa was so powerful, um, whether it's from Kemet to Kush to, um, to Queen of Zynga. As a matter of fact, this is probably the first book that I read that talked about Queen of Zynga, which is featured in my book, Seven Types of Queens, King of Zion, as a warrior queen. Now. This book has the queens, has the kings. Oh, has some scratch offs I forgot about. <laughs> see that? You, you see the power reading? They say if you want to hide some good information, you put it in, in the book. You want to hide information from the back, you put it in the book. Well, you put that in the book with me, you're going to lose your information and money. Trust that, buddy. But um, this book here, Dr. Boris Shango said you should read twice a year. Read it till the pages fall off. That's how good of a book this is. And it's historical facts. Um, that empowers you to understand why we are in the situation we are in today, why we're so divided, why the European system divided us in the first place. This book here, um, when I first, I mean, I heard so many people um, reference this book, so many people, and I'm going to reference it when I write the follow up to Seven Types of Queens, it's going to be a Seven Types of Kings, Queens Desire. So I'm going to switch that up. Um, I'm going to continue writing as soon as I get back from London. As a matter of fact, I may write some of it while I'm in London. But this book here, and it talks about all the major and even small civilizations throughout Africa. Um, mentions of, of Haiti and Jamaica, the United States. This book here, every black fam should have this book. Every black fam should have this book. And also have a book called Holistic African Medicine. You know, holistic. And this, I'm looking right at it too. I want to go grab it. But this book here is a classic. This book here is an absolute classic that we all must get and I'm going to grab this right here. Since we're on the topic of what great books to read and write, here's another one. This book here, this is what I mentioned, African Holistic Health 
by Dr. Layla Africa. This is a very awesome book. It's, it's thick. It has a lot of good information. Um, I took a lot of good notes in it. This book will help you understand the health, remedies, herbs, vitamins, recipes, sexual personality types, foods to avoid, self-diagnosis charts, male charts, male cycles, female cycles, anthrax, AIDS, cocaine addiction remedies. I mean, this book here has everything. I believe it has something on uh, syphilis uh, and a couple STDs, natural cures that you can take. This book here is a must. This should be a New York Times bestseller. But I'm just saying, every black family should have this book and should have this book. As a matter of fact, every household, I don't care where you at, where you from, these two books, these two books are classics. All right, and also I want to give a shout out to TC Carrier because we are going on tour for the Kings and Queens um, book tour. Go to uh, Queen, kingsandqueensbooktour.com to get information on this book here by TC Carrier, which is a beautiful book, a powerful book, The Secret Science of Black Male Female Sex. Um, it's referenced in my book, Seven Types of Queens Teen Desire. You, you know, a couple of times, and um, I learned a lot from this book. As a matter of fact, I mentioned Dr. Boris Shango book, African Woman, Original Guardian Angel, and African Genesis. You know, definitely want to, those books, uh, this book, and Dr. Boris Shango book, which is, you know, out in my living room bookcase, taught me a lot about sexual energy, understanding the powers of a woman. And that's why those two books, especially Dr. Boris Shango book, was highly Reference in my book, Seven Types of Queen Teen Desire, to empower women to understand their importance, to get women back on the throne, and to show men what a real man is supposed to be looking for in a woman, but also what other things they haven't been looking into, other than looking at her ass, looking at her titties, looking, you know, her lips, thinking how how good her head might be, um, you know, going down on him, or you know, saying things. Or, yeah, that may be fun. But there's so much more to a woman um, with her a feminine sacred energy and how the woman is, is naturally given the power to give birth. Naturally given that power to give birth. You know, um, being able to manifest your dreams and goals, being able to inspire and encourage people. You know, people like Michelle Obama, Flojo, the track star, Florence Griffin Journal. As a matter of fact, her birthday was yesterday. So I got to publish that blog today. You understand? Know so I'm going to publish that blog today. Flojo birthday. Um, she died on the 21st. And I can't believe I forgot that. I didn't give her a shout out. You know? But um, hey, it is what it is. Listen to y'all. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Oh, I did post it. I sent it, I sent it to her husband. So I don't know if he read it yet. But um, hey, check me out. King Kevin Dorval. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Listen. Black people do read. We just need a lot more of us reading. Bottom line, all right? Support the real KevinDorval.com. King Kevin in the building. And um, if you're in London, I see you in London for the um, Kings and Queens book tour. Uh, go to my Instagram, Twitter. Shout out to Queen Suzanne in London, United Kingdom. Uh, we'll be there. New York, I'll be there soon. I'm in Miami right now, but I'm going to be in your neighborhood soon. So support the real. Let's get our kids reading. Let's. Stop playing around and allowing the system to control our youth, control their future. We need to control their future, not the prison system. Allow, give them the chance. They, they would not have a chance if they're not reading. That's the bottom line. Bless out.